It's Tuesday night. It must be cigar time. Welcome back. Did you guys miss me? No. no. You were gone? Uh, <laughs> I missed you, believe me. I get I no respect. You wasn't here? <laughs> I feel like the Rodney Dangerfield of cigar time. I didn't know you were gone. You look well, like Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. Wow. wow. No respect. <laughs> wow. I get absolutely no respect. Wow. Well, today we're going to start out the show smoking our Eduardo Double Forte, and I'm going to let Rob tell you about it, and then we have a very special guest, which I'll introduce as soon as Rob is done. The uh, Double Forte is a completely Nicaraguan cigar, Nicaraguan Puro. It has all Lajero, and it's got a sun-grown Nicaraguan wrapper. It's, uh, has, somebody has the uh, cigar, oh, here it is. It's the one with the red footband on it in our stores. All our stores, all seven. All our stores, all seven. Okay. That's right. Today, uh, we have the playa with us. We have Jonathan Lipson from Alex Bradley. Alec. Alec, Alec Bradley. Oh, I just said that so you could correct me. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to tell you all about the Alec Bradley company, and, and today we're going to be featuring the Nica Puro. So, Jonathan, take it away. Well, a quick, uh, quick little bit about Alec Bradley. Uh, we're about a 16-year-old company. Alec and Bradley are the names of the owner, sons. Uh, the owner's name is Alan Rubin. Um, we are a uh, premium cigar company. Uh, we received uh, Cigar of the Year 2011 Cigar Aficionado for the Alec Bradley Prensado Churchill. And um, like Art said, today we will be smoking the Nica Piro Gordo, uh, which is an all Nicaraguan cigar, definitely one of our fuller bodied cigars. So that's the uh, quick and dirty. Charlie, don't dirty. you have some uh, <laughs> new cigars that have come out recently, which I know all our stores have? We do, absolutely. The Reyes Cubanas is one of our newer cigars. Uh, it is the factory that produces the Prensado. They also produce a whole bunch of other brands. Generally, we have about 88% capacity in that factory. And then uh, the Mundial, which is, uh, like I said, Alan Rubin is the owner of the company. That's been his pet project now for over five years. Seven different tobaccos in there, very complex. Definitely full body. That's a great cigar. Thank you so much. Cigar. Thank you. And that's a that's an all figurado line, right? We call it a Punta Lanza, which um, it's a semi figurado, so it's kind of tapered at the edge, but it flat caps off. It doesn't really change shape, just only at the, the bottom of it's the got cigar. A nipple. Yeah, it has a nipple. <laughs> it's got a nipple. It's there you go. We've discussed nipples on nipple. there. Okay, yeah. fantastic. We like possible right. actually. Uh, you, you also have some uh, other lines that we carry, like the Prensado and a few of the others. Why don't you tell us a little bit about those? Correct. Uh, like uh, Art said, we have the Prensado at the stores. We have uh, Black Market, the Alec Bradley New York edition. Um, well, we also have Tempest, Tempest. American Tempest. Classics, American Sungrown. American yeah. Sungrown. So um, they carry a little bit um, of everything from us, mild to medium to full-bodied. Um, we do a little bit of everything for yeah. everybody. Most of our cigars on humid are at least 90 rated in Cigar Aficionado. What's your awesome. best selling cigar, you think? Our best selling cigar by far is the Black Market. Is it really? Yeah, really? absolutely, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I thought That's it would be the Prensado. I was thinking the Tempest. Tempest was definitely high. Uh, the thing about the Black Market at this point, it's very, very unique. It has some Panamanian Lajero in it. So it has a very unique flavor. People really enjoy that because you tend not to get that flavor profile from Panamanian right. tobacco right. because it's very hard to use and it's very hard to blend with. It's middle of the, middle of the road price wise too. I think exactly, I great well, price point. The one thing I like about your line is it has a cigar for just about every price point right. every yes, spring. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Good Absolutely. Point. Yeah, Alan came out with a good uh, marketing ploy there. It's awesome. Thank you, thank Absolutely. you. And, I, and I, I think overall, I like Bradley as a company is maybe the definition of what boutique cigar makers mm -hmm. are today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, appreciate that. Also, tell us a little bit about, because I see it all over Facebook, you, the various representatives of your company <laughs> and the executives of your company have this marketing theme with, of course, the Master Chief. Master Chief, yep. Our old friend George Sosa heading up the team. Why don't you explain the origin of that and, and what all that means? Um, Alan, our leader. Um, he's probably the general, right? He, he would be the general, but uh, he's... <laughs> in the background right now doing most of our blending so he'd like to put the reps at the forefront of the company we're the ones on the street we're the ones doing the events so our marketing campaign is the road warriors of which i am the player yeah. uh they came up the with <laughs> they came up with all the names for the different reps in the different territories 
Uh, and it's been working out pretty well. I was just at uh, Big Smoke, and people were yelling at me and pointing, hey, it's the player. Yeah. So I am getting recognized, and I really do think what, that's what pretty cool. What are the names cool. of the other, one, the other guys? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Push my ego just a yeah, little bit, yeah. yeah. And you, you needed that. You come, I do, yeah, do, definitely. Do you come by that name honestly? But, um... Depends on the he's definition. That, he's got that baby face, so yeah. yeah. What are the other names? Uh, like uh, we said, George Sos is the Master Chief. That comes from him being the Master being a master chief in the Navy. He was. Um, we have the Zen master. We have God knows what else we have. We have plenty of things. And it all you know, just comes down to the different personalities, uh, things that people have done in their lives, the likes, the dislikes. And that's how they came up with these names. It's a great just, marketing tool. Thank you. Yeah, great thank marketing. You. It's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. Well, Jonathan, thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. And thanks for taking part in our panel. More later. Uh, Tia will introduce our first cigar. Are we going to do the? Oh, what are we going to do? We're going to. We're we're gonna gonna great, this. We gotta review our double forte. Ah. I know you're new to this. See, I was so gone for a little while yeah. and yeah. I forgot so all about it. When you leave? We uh, can start if you gone. want. You want me to start it? Yeah. No, I always bring we're up always the end. Start. I always start. All right, um, the double forte. I'm just, I'm not giving the rating yet, right? I'm just giving the review. Yep. Just okay. give the review. Um, I like this cigar. Not as great as our master blend, but it's a great cigar. Very smooth. Um, good f uh, flavor profile. One of my favorites. It's good. I, I agree. It's not as good as the master. And I, I would not call this your prototypical Nicaraguan puro. Although the, the sun-grown uh, wrapper gives it a very unique flavor, very mm. unique taste. Mm -hmm. And I would like to offer a slight cautionary note. You might be intimidated when you hear the name of this cigar, since double fuerte means twice as strong. Uh, it's not that kind of strong that it's going to blow you away, but compared to the other Eduardo's, it's much more full-bodied, yes. and that's why we call it Double Fuerte. That's, Rob? Yeah. Um, this is a, a Nicaraguan Puro cigar, which I generally love. Um, I'm not enamored with this cigar. This cigar is, does not fit my taste profile at all. Um, to me, it tastes waxy. Um, I've never liked this cigar. So. See? Although we sell a ton of these cigars. I am definitely in the, in the minority like the when band? I say that. How do you like so the band on it? No, no, no Tia band. loves the yes, band. There is. The red band. Uh, the red band. Now you can it's see we are totally objective on our, on our show here. Yeah. This is our cigar. We make it. And, and we still, some of us don't like it. I, I, I say <laughs> don't like it as much. As much. Thing. Now this, is, this cigar is not for your very mild smoker. This is a little bit more upstream. It's a little bit too strong even for my taste. So I'm super critical. It's a well-made cigar, has a beautiful wrapper on it. If you like sun-grown wrappers, I say it's a little strong for my taste. But being objective, it's to me, again, for $4.50, a little higher in Jersey, it's an excellent cigar for the price point. But again, we're going to have differences of opinion because this is not an everyday cigar to a lot of people, including this guy. So a mystery smoker. Oh, mystery oh, smoker. forgot the mystery smoker. Well, you can't see him. He's, he's so over. mystery, I can't see him. I'm just hiding here in the shadows. He <laughs> yeah, literally. I kind of <laughs> know what he, I, I know his profile. Go ahead. This is a good cigar. It's just uh, not quite in, in mine. I like the milder versions of the Eduardo, the Suave, and the Dominico a lot better. But it, it is still a good cigar, and Paul was correct. It's not an overpowering cigar. I can smoke the cigar still occasionally, even though I don't like a, a very powerful cigar so don't be afraid to try it all right we're going to go around the horn starting with the mystery smoker first ratings i give it a 3.75 stole my uh, rating uh, 3.75 3.5 3.5 3 Ooh. i go 3.5 again it, 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 i don't think anybody's taken into consideration the value it's hard to get a decent cigar for four dollars that price has never changed it's always been <laughs> that, yeah that's well, why it's, it's been 450 yeah, for many for many years time. Yes, it has. Long time. <laughs> okay now it's time for tia to tell us about our first cigar yes our Second first cigar second. is the alec bradley nica puro it's a nicaraguan puro which means guys that the wrapper oh, of the binder and the, the filler all nicaraguan <laughs> Are all from wow. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, he got me. The sizes are a Churchill, Gordo, my favorite, which we're going to smoke today, a Robusto, a Toro, and a Torpedo. And the flavor profile is hints of leather, coca, nutmeg, toasty, and roasted nuts. Coca? Coasted nuts. Co -co -co. Coco. 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 Well, that's, I like coca. That's a whole different like coca flavor oil. profile. Now, is it roasted is it? nuts? Is it, is it more in the almonds or walnuts? Mm, the nuts? 
The almond. Almond. And the lovely Miss Caroline will present us with our first cigar. Because they're cigars. bigger. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's nice to have. So you like the, big the nuts? are bigger? <laughs> Wait till we talk about our topic. Oh. And then I'm really going to talk about some nuts. Thank oh, you. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. <Wow. laughs> Thank you. We're out of control today. Yeah. Thank you, Caroline. Oh, I can't. Now, this is a Gordo. There you go. Thank you. This is the Robusta. No, this actually, is, actually, yeah. actually, this is a Robusto. I thought we were smoking the Gordo. No. No, looks stupid. Okay. Make Tia, you never look stupid. Thank you. Oh, this looks sexy. Now we now have the cutting and lighting ceremony yes, going on. Yes, cutting and lighting. So I'm you doing a punch Want to play some background usual. music and occupy yourself for a few seconds? We'll be right back. So what yeah. is the first topic today? Our first topic is... How, how to prepare your humidor. Yes. I love that. Now I must be, before we forget, but maybe no one will say this, when you buy a humidor at one of our seven stores, conveniently located in every neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Especially ready. And maybe some more being added shortly. Yeah. You will get a, a sheet of instructions how to prepare, but we're going to talk a little bit about it now. Who wants to take the helm on this? Mm. Rob does. What is Rob doing? I don't know. Is that yeah. one do it? Oh, you well, lazy bum, you. I'll do it. You are. Good. Then you do I'll do it. Wipe okay. it down with the do it. I'll do it. All right. First thing you, you do when you buy a humidor, yeah. take it out of the box. You want to get some distilled water. I like to put mine in a little um, spray bottle. And you spray it down. You want to, don't soak it too much where it's like a puddle in there, but you want to soak it down. And then you want to wipe it down. And then. Why distilled water? Because distilled water is pure. Is pure. Yeah, yeah, I want to just <laughs> it's like it right also doesn't away. evaporate as quickly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so after you wipe it down, you want to make sure you even get the sides where the seal is. You want to get all the Spanish cedar that's inside. Um, then the next step is to put a little distilled water in a cup. Yeah, and I put usually it inside. use a shot glass. Yeah, shot glass. Depending on the size of the box. Yes, put it inside the humidor, and then you want to calibrate it. That's Right, that's how you get it. Well, depending on if you have a hygrometer or not. Well, if you have a, reg a digital hygrometer, right. you still want to put it in there so it'll put the humidor at a perfect temperature, which is 70% the humidity, humidity, humidity and the 70, temperature 70. Around 70. 70. Yeah, right. 70 and 70. then we do that for a day. Yeah, then overnight. Then overnight. Day. overnight yeah. Then you go back in the next day. You want to spray it down again. Just wipe it down a little bit more. And then it's ready to put it in. It should be good to go. Cigars. Yeah. Good to go. One hint though, when you do wipe down your humidor, or make sure you do it with something that's never been used before. You oh don't yes. Wanna, you don't want any soap. Clean. I usually use paper towels. I use a paper towel. A white, paper towel. A white yeah. plain mm -hmm. paper towel. Or a sponge that hasn't been used, but you don't want any soapy uh, aromas or anything in there. Now I have a question. A lot of people, I know it's not how to prepare it, but a lot of people um, use distilled water to humidify their box. It depends on what kind of humidity uh, device you're using. The still water is pure. If you use regular water, you're going to get all the minerals and everything that's in regular water. No, but they don't water. use glyco at all. I mean, they don't use the crystals well, or anything like that. If they you, just say, I'm using distilled water. If you water. live in, a, in an area that the, the around the year temperature is around 70 degrees, you don't need to use uh, propylene glycol. But if you live in the Northeast, where our seven stores are located, I recommend the propylene glycol yeah. mix. We call it bug juice in our stores. Yeah. With 50% propylene glycol and 50% distilled water. And that way, your your humidity uh, device will take and give humidity as needed to keep it at around 70. Right. Yeah, the change in seasons will affect the humidity. Um, Absolutely. Because right. if you put your air conditioning on, that'll cause the humidity yep. to, to plummet. Um, and the same thing with if you, if you put your heat on, that sucks a lot of the humidity. It dries out the air. So you'll notice this time of the, the, this time of the year and in the spring, you'll get a lot of fluctuations. I, I, just, I just leave my humidor alone. When, when if, if I get big fluctuations, it'll 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 equal out over a few days. Yeah. Where do you keep yours? Me? Mm -hmm. Which one? Oh, <laughs> doesn't matter. Most the of them. The one in your house. The one in my house, I keep in my basement. Okay. I try to keep mine very close, so I have like a humidor almost in every room, just in case. You just you never, never know. Do. Right in the bathroom, right next to the. Yeah, yeah. near the phone. <laughs> I just in case. Just in case. You never know. You never know. Well, our our you next uh, our next segment is uh, Paul in the country. Paul, what country are you in today? I'm in Mexico. Mexico! Arriba! Now, I, I want to tell you a few things about the history of tobacco in Mexico. Oh, good. I was hoping you weren't going to say the history of Mexico. No. <laughs> <laughs> too long and too much. Um, tobacco in Mexico comes from an area called the San Andres Valley. 
It's on the southern end of the Gulf of Mexico uh, in an area near the city of Veracruz. And it's a very volcanic area, which is why the soil is so rich there. And in fact, if we wanted to look at the modern history of cigars, other than Cuba, Mexico was the oldest country in the business. Yeah. Be because yeah. in the early 1800s, a collection of Cuban tobacco farmers moved to Veracruz, brought seeds, and established the industry there. And that's way before they were doing it in Nicaragua or Honduras or any of the other countries. And I know that to be true, because if you watched all the Clint Eastwood spaghetti westerns, yeah. they were all they were all supposed to be in Mexico, although actually they were in the deserts of Spain, but they were supposed to be in Mexico, and they were smoking those little Mexican cheroots. Mexican cheroots. That's why you know it's true? That's why I know it's true. Because uh, of Clint Eastwood. Because of Clint Eastwood. <laughs> okay. I'll buy that. The, uh, the seeds that the first Cubans brought to Mexico, uh, they called them Andres Negro, uh, and the reason that they called them that is the tobacco <laughs> that grew from it. Everything all right? <laughs> Rob has rolled his eyes at me. Do you need a break, maybe? <laughs> Please continue. Anyway, those seeds yielded a very dark, spicy leaf, and in fact, that leaf is still used today to produce some of the most desirable Maduro wrappers in the industry. Right. Um, in the early 1900s, the Dutch came to the San Andres Valley also, and they brought uh, their Indonesian seeds, or Sumatra seed, uh, and like in much of the rest of the world that the Dutch went to with their seeds, it didn't work out so well. In fact, the only place really that those seeds wound up doing well was my favorite place, but we don't need to talk about that. No, <laughs> no we don't. Um, all of the industry was really led throughout the 1800s and into the 1900s and through today by one primary family, the Tarrant family, yeah. that are still very important in the industry now. Interestingly, when the, the Cuban Revolution hit, Mexican Puros became the best-selling cigars in the world. And the single strongest brand in the world at that time is one that you might have heard of, and that's Teyamo. Hmm? And if you're old enough, you'll remember that there was a time when there was a Teyamo store everywhere. on virtually yeah. every yeah, street corner yeah. everywhere. everywhere. Oh. I remember the signs. Yep. Teyamo, it yeah, was everywhere. Yeah. Um, the Mexican cigar industry fell on hard times, and it did so for primarily two reasons. In all of the other countries that produce cigars, it is an important part of their overall economy and the government supported them heavily. In Mexico, because it's such a big and relatively wealthy uh, country compared to the other yeah. cigar places, it, it was not that important and the government didn't support them nearly as much. The other, the other thing that really hurt Teamo and the other brands is that all Mexican cigars are all Puros, right. or at least they always were. Right. And when the other countries began to share tobacco and create more complex blends, Mexico was left far behind because they were still producing only these Puros. Uh, so they fell out of favor and they virtually disappeared. You don't hear about Mexican cigars much, you don't see a lot of Mexican cigars. But here's a surprise. Today, <laughs> today, 80 percent of the tobacco grown in Mexico is exported uh, to other countries to use in their blending. Right. Mm -hmm. And the result of that is, chances are, scattered amongst your favorite cigars, whether they're Nicaraguan or Honduran or Dominican, chances are there's some San Andres tobacco in there. Mm -hmm. right. uh, even though a lot of people in those countries don't much want to admit that there's Mexican tobacco in their cigars. But there are. Now, isn't there another interesting little tidbit about the San Andreas va Valley? Isn't that the originating point of the San Andreas Fault? Oh, I don't even know that. Well, I don't know it either, but it seems to reason because it runs up It, it runs, runs, runs all way. the way up through yeah. Mexico into and into California. California. Yeah, I believe that's true. Please well, look it up, verify it. And, and <laughs> since the San Andres Valley is highly volcanic, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, it fits. absolutely. 
Well, Paul, we thank you very much. Well, can't, wait, you. can't wait till next week to find out what country you'll be in next week. I'm, I'm on the road. I, ho <laughs> I hope your passport is like got Waldo? a lot of room left in it. You like Waldo, we got to find you? Yeah, we're <laughs> I'm well, just I, like Waldo. I like your hat today. Oh, yeah. thank yes, you. It is really this nice. is my real hat. I'm jealous. That's his travel hat. I figured you'd have a sombrero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just from Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, it, I think it's time now to review our uh, Nick, Nick Apuro. Mystery uh, man, take it away. Right. The Nick Apuro is a beautifully constructed cigar. <clears throat> it has a really good draw. I really like the draw. And I like the spiciness. I get some spiciness on the front end when I, when I smoke it. And then it, it smooths out, and I like it. It's got a really nice sweet taste to it to me. I really enjoy the cigar. Great. It's wonderful. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. Right in front of him, too. Wow. I know. I have to be honest, right? Wow. I have to be frank. Um, no, try I, to be Tia. I'll be Tia. Yeah. Frank's not here. <sighs> oh, God. Thank God. Anyway, small thing. He comes in an hour. I taste <laughs> the leather. I definitely taste the leather, and I do taste some of the, the nuts. But when I first lit it up, I just... You guys know when I first light a cigar, if it does not taste right, I'm not happy with it. Um, I love the band. It oh, is beautifully right. constructed. Safe, Jonathan. You're fine. And I'm a big Nick. I'm a big you know Nicaraguan Puro fan, but I'm just not happy with this one. I'm sorry. Well, I think you need to let this burn a little more. This cigar does. I, it took me it five minutes to light it. That's why. And the draw, I have to. Sorry. I'm oh, not, you got mine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, it's not drawing. I usually know. get the tight ones. Yeah. Well, I got a tight one today. <laughs> hey. What you know about tight ones? I think it's... Oh! <laughs> whoa, whoa. Wow. I was just going to say, it's like, your boyfriend. <laughs> it's like your boyfriend's tight. Scott? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tight. This is a family what? show. Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. You, yeah. It's a really nice wrapper. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, no. The, the wrapper is actually... I was looking at it. It's beautiful. It's got a great chocolate brown. Yeah. Um, a really nice oil on it. Uh, I'm enjoying the cigar. I've had a couple of these before, and I, I didn't like them as much as I'm enjoying this one for some reason. Um, I like the cocoa flavors. I didn't get as much spice on the front, but I'm, I definitely get the toasty and the, and the roasted nuts from it. Mm -hmm. Paul? I find the complexity of this cigar to be a real treat. It has all of the flavors, I find, it has all of the flavors in the list. I taste the cocoa and then that fades out and I get the nutmeg and the toast and the nuts. And it just keeps switching back and forth and I enjoy that. Now I know we'll get a totally objective opinion now. <laughs> Jonathan? I just love the cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I know that? There's no that. Surprise, surprise. Add, to add to um, the flavor profile, I definitely get uh, a distinct cinnamon note out of this cigar. Um, mm. This is one of the stronger cigars that we do make. Um, there's a little bit of peppery note on it, but um, this batch that we took out today is extraordinarily oily. Which may have been, you know, some of the problem that Tia had with the lighting the on lighting, it. Yeah, yeah. That might have caused it. Yeah. Yeah, it it may have caused that, but uh, this is one of my favorite Alec Bradley products. Rob, um, I agree with Jonathan. Um, it, Nicaraguan is my favorite tobacco in the world. Uh, it does have a very leathery taste to it. You can definitely taste the nutmeg. I don't get the cinnamon that you get, um, and I'm very sensitive to that because I, yeah, don't don't like like I don't like mm -hmm. cinnamon. Yeah, I don't either. Um, I don't get that at all. But I do taste the nutmeg and the toast. Um, I think it's a great cigar. I really do. I think it's the second best cigar uh, Alec Bradley makes. What's, What's the, the best one? Um, I knew that was coming from somebody. I like the uh, the Prince Otto. Prince Otto. I knew Prince that. Prince Otto is the best. I like the fine and rare. I like the Tempest best. I like the Tempest best. Yeah. Well, cool. I guess it's up to me, huh? Mm-hmm. It's a great cigar. I can't really add to what's already been said. I don't get the cinnamon quite either, but I mean the leather and the nutmeg, and and, and I find it not as full body as. And it's funny, I'm a little sensitive to full body. But I mean, it's, it's it's an excellent cigar. I like the oily wrapper. I also like the band. <laughs> it's got two bands. Yeah, it does yeah, have, have two bands. Yeah, yeah. 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 Double, double the pleasure. <laughs> so no, it's an excellent cigar. I, I guess we should probably rate it. No, Tia, why don't you? Uh, uh oh, no, no. Let's not start with Tia on the rating. Let's start with the mystery, yeah. with the with mystery, the mystery smoker. Well, I give it a four and a half. Wow. Okay. Tia. Three point seven five. Oh, God. Five? Four and a quarter. Four, four and a half. Well, Jonathan, yeah, my guy can't say anything less than a five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? just, so, just so you all remember or know from previous shows, our scale is one to five. Yes. Rob? Uh, four and a half. Well, it's so easy to say four and a half. I, I would go between, to me, four and a half and four, seven, five. I really do enjoy this cigar. So four, six, seven, five? Four, six, seven, no, five. no, actually, it's four, it, unfortunately, because of somebody low rating it, it, it that comes in at 4.59. <laughs> 
Oh, okay, good. just to be fair, the, I think better. it's the nutmeg. That's oh, it's too late me. to make friends now. All right, yeah. well, it is. Yeah. I don't like nutmeg, so I think that's what it is. So there you go. All right, our next topic is going to be our worst jobs. Yeah. Mystery man, you start out and be quick. Well, I had to clean latrines while I was in the military. That uh, had to be the worst that's job. That's qualifies. Enough said. That's pretty bad. T? I was an ass wiper. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I was a CNA for a year at a nursing home. So. You were in TNA? What? CNA. Oh, CNA. CNA. Oh, I think oh it's TNA. Wow. Wow. Man, man. This is just Tough you never know what's going to be said on this show. Wow. Can we say that? Can you say ass wiper on the show? Yeah, I could. That? I pre pre um, checked. Pre cleared it with yeah, the sensors. Okay. The Scott. Oh boy. Uh, my first, my worst job there. I worked for this guy in Horsham. Uh, started <laughs> 2003. <laughs> no, uh, I, I worked in a paper recycling plant, and uh, on Monday mornings after the all the stuff in the hopper sat there, I had to clean them out. It was filled oh with my God. every godforsaken thing, including remains, oh. and it was oh, just yeah. uh, we get the oh, idea. It was awful. awful. I actually my worst job was at a Toys R Us. I had to wear the Jeffrey Giraffe <laughs> costume, oh. Oh. which was about wow. nine feet oh tall, God. and inside I had to hold a little string that controlled his eyes and mouth. And the kids oh. always loved to kick me in the shins and stick <laughs> stick gum to my fur. Wow, Jonathan, nice. Uh, Head hunter for computer engineers. Try to keep one of those guys on the phone. Ooh. Rob, wow, uh, mine was like a door-to-door -door salesman. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. What it's knocking you, on doors. What did you, what you sell? Anything. Um, Encyclopedia. He was the full of brush man. Yeah. Knives. I sold, sold everything. Knives, um, oh. leather bags, uh, crystal, supposedly crystal, glassware. Ah, it, uh, it was terrible. Well, what like, kind of knives? Switchblades? No, like a, you know, <laughs> steak knives. Ginsu kind of stuff. No, worse than that. Um, I guess it, I guess it's my turn. Yeah, yeah. yeah this was well, gonna be interesting. I don't know how to say this, but I never had a worse job because I never had a job. I never worked for anybody. Anybody. Well, there was a little government service there, but that wasn't too bad either. Now, I've enjoyed just about every day I've gotten up and gone to work, and I'm very honored and you know privileged to have had that. So um, I don't. I've never had a worse job. I enjoy what I do. So well, how, that, how, how big can this be? We sit around, how big can this be right now? We sit around smoking cigars and well, that's we why sit you know, all that's day. We're the best jobs you know, you've ever had. All day long, all we do is smoke, we drink, and we eat. And then we go home. We eat barbecue. Thing. And we barbecue. Yeah. Barbecue, barbecue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, thanks for the plug. plugs. plugs. I'm right. sorry. <laughs> this episode we went no by way too fast. Do we have a cigar to tell them about for next week? That's Rob's job. Next week is the. Uh, Camacho Corojo. Ooh, Camacho Corojo, nice. I love it. Well, well, I guess you know what country I'm going to be. Yeah, right? Unfortunately, it's uh, time to say goodbye. Mystery man. See you all later. Hey. Bye-bye for now. Bye, Mom. Smoke often and smoke happy, folks. Thanks for having me, guys. Ciao for now. Well, please tune in again next Tuesday night at 7.30. We've enjoyed coming to you all these very months. And we appreciate all the emails you've sent us, hints, criticisms, whatever. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. <laughs>